Hi YouTube. Um, back for another update here. You can see I got this cut off. Looks pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Close to what I wanted. As you can see, the the cut turned out really nice. The EPO, whatever this stuff is, cut really nice. And I'll lift it up here in a minute so you can get a better view of it. You can see I don't even need to sand it because I use that hot blade. And the whole idea is that technically these would be two flaps, but there are certain scale details that you have to compromise too much in terms of flight performance for the reward, just like anything else. So this is gonna come back and down as one piece. Like I said, they're you know in real life these would be two separate pieces. And then actually this piece would be continued back here. And you know on some of the bigger airliners that's actually a, a massive inboard aileron. And then there's sometimes one or two outboard ailerons. Um, but in, in the case of the A320, um, this, this is just a structural rib. So there's actually wing that comes back here. So we're gonna lose that in this uh, simulation here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back through and put those spoilers in. Um, and they're probably just gonna consist of like a, a thin piece of plastic, um, probably to the tune of um, you know, like the thickness of this Blue Bunny um, or maybe even a bottle, you know, like a juice bottle. Something like this would be too, it'd be too flimsy, I think. But it, it's nice and light, so we may end up doing that. Just depends on kind of color scheme and things like that. So I've got to paint all this stuff and, um, you know, I'll just kind of work it out with whatever I have available. This Listerine bottle might actually work really nice because it's got flat surfaces on it. So I might use that. Or this, this milk bottle actually, yeah, it's a little, little flimsy. But either way, um, I mean, we're just looking for scale details. We're not, I mean, we're not making the plane for real, but we do want this surface to make a large impact on the way this flies. Now, it kills me that I had to cut this short because that should have cut all the way down, but we had to make a decision. And so I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna lay it down for just a second, guys. All right, coming right back to you. You can see, once we get on the underside, I suppose I can probably put my torch back here. But you can see from the underside of the wing that we still have a lot of structural integrity because this was the weakest part of the wing, um, short of the fact that there was the canoes in there. So keeping in mind that those canoes are still gonna help to strengthen the wing because they're still gonna be attached. I have four good attachment points you can see this is the only one that's going to be a little tricky because that's solid plastic and that's actually attached to the nacelle adapter. But there's no reason I can't glue a hinge to that if I don't want to. You know, if I want to, I can. Um, so you can see how cool that looks. And I mean, honestly, I'll probably end up having this come in pretty tight when it's closed, um, just depending on what hinge I end up using. And then, as you can imagine, you know, take off setting. And then landing setting is going to be way out there. So I don't know yet if I'm going to end up having to cut it here where it actually has the bend. Um, and if I do, it's not really a big deal because honestly that gap may need to be closed in a little bit just so that as I, I bring these out, it doesn't get all wonky. Because the inside is going to want to, it's going to want to gap larger in the inside than it will on the outside. The other thing I'm debating about doing is up here where my thumb is. This area may end up getting um, some sort of a baffle that will transfer down. I haven't decided yet, just because of the nature of the weird uh, wing structure here. So anyway, just to keep you guys up to date, a lot of thought goes into this stuff. I mean, it might be something that Supreme Hobbies has done on the A330, but of course they don't have it in stock, and I would have definitely bought that plane instead of this one. This has been a sweet plane though, I gotta say guys. Really cool plane. And when I'm done with it, it's gonna be even cooler. So anyway, the other thing too is I've got my servos. Um, and they're gonna drive this, but eventually they're gonna drive the, the leading edge slats. Unless I do a passive slat, which I guess I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna work. But either way guys, I'll keep you in the loop. I'll show you what, what we end up doing here. And then if you wanna try to mimic it on your own, uh, be my guest if you like wasting lots of life.